Well, there you go. Did you hear that, T? Yep. Oh, it came through my computer anyway. Yeah. Don't need to give anyone a warning. Computer tells us these days. All right. Well, I'll, I'll run through a couple of things that were sort of on my mind, which was the reason I said we were going to have this Zoom call. Nothing terribly exciting in my opinion, but what brought it about was I've just been chatting to a, a few people lately that, you know, like a lot of people, they're living paycheck to paycheck and by the end of the week, they're, they're really struggling, um, usually because they can't afford their packet of cigarettes or a carton of beer or something something like that, but I didn't have too much pity for them. But <clears throat> um, it just, just sort of appeared to me that there's a lot of people that don't even have the the slightest idea on how to actually how to save. And I guess a lot of that is because if they only if they only save five or ten bucks each week, it doesn't appear to be enough to be worthwhile. So they don't bother. They just go and spend it each week. So a bit of what I might go through here tonight is you know the good old compounding and what just you know five or ten bucks can can do over the course of a few years. And any other thing that I think stops people from making a start with with saving and and you know I guess saving is always sort of the start of investing, but is that you know they don't understand the compounding. They you know once they save a few little dollars, they don't know what to do with it, and and also it's always going to take a little bit of discipline. You know, like if people are used to just spending their paycheck every week. And even, even saving ten dollars isn't something they're used to. And maybe that means they, you know, they need to just drink one cart of beer a night instead of two. But um, you know, just just cut like it's always when when finances are really tight like that and you are living paycheck to paycheck, really the, the first thing you've got to do is is, is sacrifice something. Um, you know, whether it's that extra tub of ice cream or a packet of cigarettes or you know, there's lots of little things that we don't necessarily have to have in our life, but we do. Um, so sort of putting your finger on a few little things that you yourself can, um, you know, cut back on so that you can put that away and start saving it. That's that's a bit of a discipline that, you know, it's not that hard, but starting, you know, it's like going to the gym, you know, once you get in the routine, it's great. But just actually getting started with fitness, weight loss, savings, all of that, it's pretty hard just to get started. So that takes a bit of discipline. And the other part of the discipline is, depending on what you're doing with your money, let's, let's say you're just putting it into a savings account. I, I have trouble keeping a straight face when I say a savings account because, you know, a, 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 like a savings account with the bank anyway, it's really, you know, you don't really get any interest these days. So it's barely savings but um you know so whatever you do with your money that that little bit that you manage to be disciplined enough to keep each week you put that let's just say you put it into a savings account with the bank and it's slowly building up and you know you, you see it go up to a couple hundred dollars five hundred dollars a couple of thousand dollars um and then you have enough you know you have a, a tight week and you feel like that extra carton of beer or whatever that extra fishing rod um you've got to be disciplined enough not to touch that savings because the whole idea of that is to, you know, let it grow into something, you know, significant so that, you know, maybe, you know, if, you, if you're just doing that and that all, you know, it would, it'd, it'd be like, you know, it's probably five or 10 years before it's anything significant, but, you know, that, that's the whole idea. People that are stuck in that, you know, and it really is stuck, they're stuck in that routine from paycheck to paycheck, you know, they, they're sort of struggling or borrowing a couple of dollars off their mate at the end of the week waiting for that, you know, waiting for payday. Um, you know, so that, that that's stuck. And I'm sure we all know people that, and we probably all have at some stage too, you know, been stuck in that routine. And it's not like you can just get stuck there for a few months. People get stuck there for years and even decades. So, you know, and, you know, that's, that's I don't know, I guess that's pretty sad, really. I mean, I've, I've been in that situation myself. Um and, and the way I got out of it was just sort of what I'm talking about now. And it's not necessarily something that's going to make you put you in a better financial situation, you know, in six months time, we may be talking several years before we're really out of that hole, 
but unless you actually start something now, several years later, you're still going to be exactly where you are now. So that's, I guess, really the start, just getting your mindset in the right place so that, you know, you've got to say, okay, I've just had enough of this. I've been stuck in this hole for however long it is. And um, I don't care. Someone can guide me or whatever, but I'll just take a stand and I'm going to change something now, even if it's just something simple like that, starting now so that in a few years' time, things, things are better off. And, you know, that's, that's hard because, you know, several years isn't just next week. It can take a while. <clears throat> um, and people in general tend to be a little impatient when it comes to money. You know, they, you know, they might see, you know, they might see me posting some good trading results or something and they want to get into trading so they can make their fortune next month or they might hear somebody talking about, cryptocurrency and how much money they made so they want to get involved with crypto you know not not so that they're better off in five years time but so that you know they've got too high of expectations they're hoping to you know have all their financial problems solved in a couple of months time and that's what i mean by they're um, a little impatient when it comes to money and, and i understand that too for sure but um really if you're going to do anything that's nice and safe you got to look at that conservative approach where it's going to take quite a while. The good old compounding, it's pretty magical, but um, you still need a few years for it to do it properly and, and safely, you know. It's a bit like <clears throat> there's a lot of, you know, I could probably scroll through my Facebook Messenger now and quickly find five or six text messages people have sent me. Um, you know, about this U Butte investment scheme where they're making these huge amounts of money. And, um, you know, I'm sure lots of people get messages like that. Like, I think most of us on the call are clearly enough to realise that it's not something that's sustainable, if not just a downright scam. But people see that and they, they that, you know, it doesn't really help them because it looks, it gives them that unrealistic expectation, you know, because they see all these people saying they've got all these few beaut things that are going on and you know it's not necessarily true and if it is it's not necessarily safe really so but anyway um what what i wouldn't mind guys is if you got any any questions or you want to chip in your own two cents worth that'd be good instead of just having me chatting away here i'd, I'd like to get other people's opinions on everything as well so feel free to, to chat as well guys How are you, Janet? You came in just after we started, so thought I'd be polite and say hello. Good, thanks, Liz. Good to hear. Um, like tonight, I didn't really want to go really talking about trading. Um, trading for me is awesome. Um, but this was sort of more something that somebody that, that knows nothing about nothing um, can just sort of start to make a change on their finances. And that, that first thing would be, you know, cutting back somewhere so they can just save a few dollars every week, put that away somewhere safe, and then just be disciplined enough not to touch it for a few years. Um, <clears throat> so I'm not, not, I'm not going to talk about trading at all, I don't think, although I always talk about trading. Um, the reason I'm not talking about trading, I mean, people may be interested in that, but it's going to be something that they're going to have to put a little bit of time into. Just give me two seconds. Yeah, it, it's not something that just, you know, um, anybody can just start and do well or succeed at, as I'm sure all of us on here know. Um, if that's what you're interested in, that's great, but you're going to have to put in the time and the education and, and the practice to become good at it. So it's not something you can just start today. <clears throat> um, one thing in, so I'm mostly talking about things in general, but one thing I am going to talk about specifically, um, because it, it's quite nifty. There's a couple of, um, you can call them, they're sort of savings and investment apps, just, you know, apps just for your phone or whatever. Um, there's two in specifically. One's called Spaceship, which quite a few people have probably heard of, particularly if they've 
read the bare, barefoot investor in that book. And there's another, I, I'm not involved in spaceship at all. There's another one called Rays, which is a very similar sort of thing. Um, and it helps, it's just an app, like all apps are there to potentially make our lives easier, but it's got some really nifty features to, to help you save. And, and then it puts that savings into an investment account and, and looks after it for you. It's generally a fairly diverse portfolio of investments, similar to what most people's superannuation would be doing, something like that. Um, returns can vary a lot as well, but still we're talking something similar to most people's superannuation. Um, for example, I just looked at my super the other day. It's just my, just my normal employer contributed super fund. It's, um, it's been averaging eight and a half percent profit per year. There's been some big years and some small years, but that's been the average. Um, so I think from what I can tell that, you know, the Rays app and the, the Spaceship app, they're all pretty similar, but, you know, eight to 10%, don't quote me for sure, because it, it all does vary and depends on the various um, investments and markets that they get into. But uh, it would just that's what we're talking about, around about that eight to 10%, I guess, maybe sometimes more, maybe sometimes less. I also have, you can choose, um, you know, like higher risk, investments which is still what i would consider not really 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 risky but what they call high risk moderate and really conservative um i wouldn't have any figures on how much each category makes but um you know you can make some selections there yourself so that that's handy like as compared like these apps are, are very safe uh, they're very legitimate um they may not have all your funds insured per se but they are held um you know there is a custodian that holds the funds and everything as well so even if the company behind those apps was to disappear then your funds are still kept aside and safe so that's quite quite a safe thing to do um for they sort of look after the little people pretty well too because if you've got balances uh, can't quote me on all of them but on on raise if you've got balances under $15,000, depending on what um, investment option you've picked, there's really no fees at all involved. On the larger balances and on some of the higher risk ones, there, there are a few fees, but you know, it it's really seems like they're designed to, to help out the little guy, which is pretty handy. And some of the features that I've, which is the main reason I wanted to talk about it, was that, to help you save features. So you can obviously make a deposit into this account, investment account, anytime you like. Um, I don't even know if there is a minimum, but you can put five bucks in, I know that. So there's no real, you know, financial stumbling block to start off with. You can, you can actually start it with zero dollars. And one of the features I like is it's got, you, you link your bank account and you, you but it, you know your bank cards and everything to it, um, and whenever you you know you, you wave your card at Woolworths or McDonald's or wherever you go to, um, it'll round up to the next dollar. So if you went and bought something that was nineteen dollars fifty, it would round it up to twenty dollars, um, and and that extra fifty cents would go into your investment account. And I think you don't have to do that, but that's one option that you can activate with the app. Uh, which is just very handy, you know, because one of the biggest problems with people trying to start saving is that whenever they take some money out of their, you know, out of their, their paycheck or their everyday lives to put into the savings account, they instantly notice that they're, they're down a bit this week, they've got to give something up. But if it's just 20 cents, 50 cents here and there every time you swipe your card, you, you don't even notice that that's happening. And, you know, and that's not much, but it does help to add to it. You can also just um, have a regular weekly deposit. It might be five, 10, 50 bucks, you know, just to suit your own finances. And yeah, it, it's just good. You still got to be disciplined enough not to go and withdraw it out of there as soon as it gets up to a couple hundred dollars. Um, but that's pretty much always going to be the case anyway. How, how many of you guys have um, ever heard of or used 
either the, the spaceship app or the Rays app or something similar to that. I've heard of it, but I've not used it before. Um, yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, it's uh, definitely sounds like something that would be aimed at, uh, like you said, someone that's not into saving or investing, I guess. So, um, yeah, it, it's pretty know. good for investing. I mean, you know, if you're into your trading or ETFs or any, and if you've got some, you know, some investment knowledge and you've, you know, you've got that experience, you can obviously potentially do better than the apps, but just for something where you need, you can know absolutely nothing and have your money get invested for you. I think it, it's quite handy. Um, I'll, I'll just share my screen. And we can start talking about compounding. Because <clears throat> that's what we all know and love, I'm sure. Um, I've just got this little compound calculator because it suits what we're talking about just now. But, you know, people, if, if, I'm, I'm just going to do some, an example or two here, just assuming that somebody's you know, low, low income earner, you know, got usual expenses, haven't struggling, you know, to save anything, living paycheck to paycheck. I guess you don't even need to be a low income earner because there's plenty of, you know, high income earners that are still living paycheck to paycheck, but it, it's all comes down to your expenses. <coughs> um, but let, let's just, this is just, um, just to show you, like, we're just talking about the raise up and you know, just putting a, a few dollars in every week, um, rounding up and all of that, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but let's just use a comp, you know, just see how that would actually pan out over the course of a number of years. Um, but, you know, let, let's, say, let's say you start your investment account with a hundred bucks and, you know, we won't even do that. We'll just add ten dollars to it every week so every week ten dollars are going to come out of your bank account straight into your investment account i'm going to do that every week um it only gives you the compounding monthly or annually but monthly is good and you know if we were to just let that tick away like that for 10 years um let's let's just go down to eight and a half percent because that's what i said um so we've got ten dollars coming out of our bank every week into it. I think nearly everybody could probably do that. You know, even if they had to, you know, go without an extra couple of chocolate bars or whatever. You know, ten dollars. You know, what's that? A couple of coffees at McDonald's. Um, most people can probably cut back enough to have an extra ten bucks to put in every week. Um, but then, as I said, the app can be doing that rounding up as well. So every time you you swipe your card somewhere, there's probably, you know, 20 to 80 cents going into it as well. Uh, I don't know how many times you'd use your card, but I think you could safely say that that would add up to well, probably 10 bucks a week, but let's just say, you know, the $10 that's going in plus $5 from the rounding up. So we've got an extra 15 going into it every week. Over the course of 10 years, this account that we just started with a hundred bucks, and we're only putting in a little bit that hopefully is hardly affecting our lives. And we'll see how that works out. Um, you know, so you started with a hundred bucks, the regular deposits that $15 every week added up to another seven, eight. And, and so you've ended up with, you know, four and a half thousand dollars worth of interest from the investment. So you've ended up with $12,000. Now, I know that's not like life changing or anything, but we're talking about somebody here that has, hasn't been able to save, haven't, they haven't even been able to save that 10 or 20 bucks every week. They've literally been dead set broke at the end of every week waiting for the paycheck. And I don't know what everyone's financial status on here is, but I'm sure we all know people that are like that, you know, those friends that you know, need to borrow 20 bucks every every Friday because their pay doesn't go until Saturday. Um, you know, so they're, they're in that cycle. So that would be, you know, that's a lot more than they'd ever, you know, likely to come up with. And then the thing is that once you've managed to save a little bit, 
and that was my main idea was bringing up the idea of these apps is not really the investment side of things but the saving side of things because it's sort of you know i think the best thing to do in that situation would be to start it set it up and then you know just forget about it really otherwise it's too tempting to go and grab your money regularly and you wouldn't end up with a big bit at the end but once you've saved a bit um you know there, there are then other options you know a lot of more worthwhile um things that you can do with your money so that your money can start working for you uh it, you know it does require a certain amount to make a start not not twelve thousand dollars necessarily but more than more than five or ten dollars so um obviously you know depending on your situation you can you can make it look a lot better if you you know if you got <clears throat> You know, like at the end of the year, if you got a bit of um, extra money from a, you know, a tax refund, you could just whack an extra thousand dollars into it. If you had a, you know, a good week or you know whatever, you can start adding more. But you know, a lot of people could add, you know, more than fifteen dollars. And if you just changed it to thirty instead of fifteen, then instead of having twelve thousand dollars, you know, we've got twenty-four thousand dollars now. So. It's um, it's rather nifty just for putting a little bit together. I mean, it's still not life-changing money, but for somebody that's never got anything at the end of every week, that's still a good potential. And and as I said, only a starting point. If people can then sort of get into the the routine of, of saving that little bit each week and and build up a little bit of a nest egg, then they can put it somewhere else that's going to you know, give a bigger return and, and therefore have a, a much larger compounding sort of um, effect. And any of us that have done some trading and, and looked at, you know, I see I've got a different compounding calculator just up here, which is what we use for our Forex trading. Not that I'm talking about trading, but um, the difference like with this one, because this is more just talking about compound interest to do with you know, like these apps, like which is super with the banks, but the, the maximum annual interest rate you can get is 20% on this particular calculator. But when we start talking about, you know, admittedly higher risk things like Forex trading, then the percentage, you know, there's there's no real no real limit. You know, we could be making 20% a month and, and this will calculate that for us. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I'm not, talking about um not talking about forex trading but there is another just really um really completely passive hands-free something anybody can do type um investment it's also an, an app as well that i've been doing recently as well and it actually obviously this this is um Sort of touching on cryptocurrency as well because this this particular company that runs the app are involved in the, the cryptocurrency world and the like on it effectively works out at i'm just using my calculator here it works out at about 15 percent profit per month and you know so then if you know we're doing it for five years which would be 60 months then we can you know if we started with a thousand dollars you know then we're, we're talking about really serious money sort of gets ridiculous with the old compound calculator if you extend it out too long um but still what i was talking about before we, we worked that out talking about the raise that we're sort of when we're using this compound calculator here we we're working it out over 10 years just because it's you know a much smaller return but over here if we work it out just over two years our thousand dollars still still turned into twenty eight thousand dollars which is um you know two years instead of 10 years like the other app so it grows much quicker as you'd expect with that higher return but that's the sort of thing that you can get involved in once you've got a little bit of money to start with 
Well, no, actually, the the um this this is the app that I was talking about. Actually, it's just called Hyperfund, but it you can actually start with just three hundred dollars there too. So you don't need a real big nest egg. But a lot of the the, the trading that I do, it does require you know a lot more than ten bucks, a lot more than three hundred dollars to to really to make a proper start. Um, any any um, questions or somebody else want to chip in their two cents worth? As I wanted to ask you about, um, I saw on your stories a while ago you had um, your passive crypto project earning you know seventy dollars seventy bucks a day, and then it's eighty bucks a day. So I just wanted to ask what what that is. Is that staking? Um, actually, that that particular post was to do with Hyperfun. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen what that is exactly, but it's just a company that specialises in um in in blockchain application so they're in the crypto space they i won't get into it all now but they do a wide range of things they're involved with you know what yeah you know, it, it, i'm going to call like compared to like the raise up it, this is what you i would call a higher risk thing um just just simply because and you, you need to know how to you know to have a little bit of knowledge of crypto just as far as you know you'd need to have a uh, an account with a cryptocurrency exchange so you could purchase crypto because you need to fund it with a, a crypto, et cetera, et cetera. But this is a company that, you know, what, what sort of tickles my fancy with it is the fact that, well, they're, they're worldwide, but for our own backyard, you know, they're involved with the Australian government. They're involved with universities in Australia. They're involved with the CSIRA, which opened my eyes up pretty well. Just, you know, it just, just makes them... Um, very, very legitimate, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's like a lot of a lot of um, investment type things. Uh, it, you know, it, your money's in somebody else's hands, so you have to have a lot of faith in the company that you're investing with. How how Hyperfund works, though, not exactly an investment. You just purchase a, a membership with them, and you get a whole heap of different rewards and and features for being a member of Hyperfund. You know, you get access to education on cryptocurrency you get rewards you know just like well that, that's really the basis behind it is a reward system so just like you know anybody that's you know back in the good old days when we we're allowed to travel a bit we all had our Qantas card and we used to accrue Qantas points um, frequent flyer points and all of that and then we'd redeem those rewards for something it's the same thing with hyper fun so for you know for being a member you know, having a membership with them, you get these rewards, daily rewards, and then you can redeem that for crypto, convert it back to cash, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you like. Um, so that, that's basically how that works, and that's what that post was about, mate. Oh, thanks for that. <clears throat> maybe, maybe another thing that I might mention as well, while we're on crypto, um, so... The idea of this call was really to talk about the simple little steps of just getting started with savings. Um, and uh, as I said, a lot of it just comes down to your mindset and being a little bit disciplined so you can start saving. But things like the raise up um, sort of really facilitate and help people do that, you know, without them thinking about it. If, if you can just forget you've got that up. It might surprise you down the track with how much you've got in there. <clears throat> um, I think I'd, I'd be surprised if most of you guys don't go and have a look at something like the Raise app. Um, I mean, I've only talked about a few of the features here. Another one of the features is if you, you know, like most, most people want to put something aside for their kids, but you can't really start any real investment thing for your kids and, unless they're 18. Otherwise, it's just in your name, really. But this has a feature where you've got an account with Raise, but you can have all these little sub accounts for your kids, and it's gonna you name those sub accounts in your kids' names, and you can put a bit aside there as well. So you end up with a few different balances in your kids' name, uh, which is just a sec, guys.
Sorry, I just had to talk to my kids. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we all, yeah, I like to talk to them now and again, you know. Like I know. I, I, know uh, but I have to, you know, I think for me, that's one of the main things, you know, we've all been sort of kicking around the traps. We've tried the different things and companies and programs and all of that. And I think, you know, off the back of the year that we've had, we've realised it's never been a more important time for everyone, really. No matter, you know, what their job or what they do or where they live or is really, really important to plan for the future. And so many of us don't do it. We're just too busy in our day to day to think about it. And, you know, I think it's great what you've talked about here. You're showing just, even just with a small amount, you, you, it doesn't have to be this big, you know, big to do. Just a small, the key is consistency and time. Yeah, for sure. That, then that's why I tried not to talk about trading. You know, I wanted to talk about, you know, the raise the up for me is something easier things. Yeah, just just something that's easy. You know, you need to know nothing, literally nothing. You can, and everybody knows how to work an app these days, and that's as simple as that. And it doesn't Although, you know, like too much time of your day. No, exactly. And a hyper fund app should, um, as I said, you need to know how to buy some crypto. But other than that, it's just all through an app as well. So that's nice and easy as well. Yeah, well set up um, with that and it, um i think it's an easy way too for newbies to sort of just to ease into that kind of realm if it is new for them is, and for it, sure. yeah would you not have said that staking and, is a quite an easy passive income also i'm just getting onto that right now oh, yeah with, with staking so that was leading me into the crypto and and into staking um so if you own own crypto, so let's say you've, you've moved on, you've worked out Hyperfund, you now have an account and you can purchase crypto and you're delving into that world a little bit. There's a lot of things that you can do with your crypto, invest it in companies and lose it, things like that. Um, there's a, there's, I shouldn't shouldn't joke about that because there are, because crypto is something With that's years exciting. On, <laughs> there's, there's a lot There's a lot of money around, you know, there's people getting rich and there's people not getting rich too, but and losing fortunes as well, but that's um, not what you hear about. But because it's, it's it's like the gold rush, you know, there's so much money in the area that it attracts all the scammers, you know. So if you're just just putting your foot into that that realm for the first time, just just seek a bit of guidance from someone that's been there a while, because uh, a lot of a lot of companies that want you to invest your crypto with them sound good, but they aren't. I can assure you. So talk to somebody you know that been around for a little while and get a bit of help there as well but staking like you were saying um what what that is and so this call was sort of for people that really haven't done any of this before so um you guys probably understand it but staking is simply like you can you can buy crypto so let's say you go and buy bitcoin let's say you went and bought bitcoin 10 years ago uh, right now you're filthy rich and you don't need to be on this call but that's the whole idea you know you, you go and buy crypto of whatever sort because you believe that and you just hang on to it which they just call hodling you hang on to it because you believe it's going to be worth a lot more in a few years time that's how you should if you just want to own crypto that's how you should look at it what and i am getting on to staking but <clears throat> um what a lot of people tend to do though is they go and buy some crypto let's I'll just call it bitcoin for now because people understand bitcoin sort of um so you go and buy some Bitcoin and Bitcoin's worth $40,000, let's say. And then next year, the value of Bitcoin goes down to $20,000. And you think, oh my God, I've just lost half of my money. Um, that's what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't worry. You, you bought it because you believe in five years time, it's going to be worth more. So you should just hang on to that for the five years and you know see if you're right or not. What's that? You know what that is? In the office. See, there's people talking to their kids there as well. But, um, yeah, so it's just like buying any sort of stocks or, um, Sorry, Liz. you know, shares in any company. The valuations are going to fluctuate up and down. Crypto more so than most because it's quite volatile. But you shouldn't buy it now and hope you're just going to see it go up, up, up and up and up because that'll never happen. You, you know, it'll go up, it'll go down, as I said, volatile. But hopefully if you bought the right coin, then 
in five years' time, it's worth a hell of a lot more. So that's what hodling should be. You've got to have that mindset still. Not worry if it drops for a couple of months because that's going to happen. When you first purchase it, you need to know that so that when it, when it does lose value for a while, you don't panic so much. And so that's just buying and holding crypto. What you can also do, and I see absolutely no reason not to do this, is that instead of just holding that crypto, you should also stake it, which means you've just, without getting too technical, it's just, just staked in a contract. So people know that it's just sitting there and you actually get paid a return just for nothing other than actually holding. You're still only just holding it, but it's staked as they call it, and you start to earn a return on it. Um, depends where you stake it, how you stake it, what it is you're staking. I couldn't even put an average on the sort of returns you get, but you know, you can go and, you know, Binance is the biggest ex crypto exchange in the world. You can go and stake crypto on there. Don't quote me on any of these figures, but if you just own, you know, let's say you own Bitcoin or Ethereum, you can go and stake that. And, you know, you might make, I don't know, eight to 15% return per year on it. Um, you can stake a more obscure coin, coin and you might get, you know, 50 to 100% return. You know, the, the only real risk with staking is that the coin you've staked loses value while you're staking it. So in, in my opinion, if you're, um, if you're just staking a coin that you would already be willing just to hold for a couple of years, then there's no risk at all because you're going to hold it anyway, hoping it increased in value. So you might as well hold it, stake it, earn a return, and then have it increased in value after a couple of years anyway. So it's just, just a win-win with no real added risk at all. If you, go, if you start seeing some of the really huge returns that you can get from staking by staking really obscure coins, new coins, then there is a much bigger risk, like you're getting a bigger return, but there is a much bigger risk that those coins could lose, lose a lot of in value. For, for example, if we just have a look here, this is one of the staking platform, plat platforms called PancakeSwap. And so they have all these, just don't worry about the terminology, they call them farms. But so there's a, a crypto called Cake and there's a crypto called BNB. If you stake them together, except that I need to refresh my screen by the looks. You know, I'm sort of getting off the point here a fair bit, but if you just stake, and some of these are obscure coins, like I was saying, but if you just if you just stake them, um, I've got a couple here I've just been playing with. Now, I'm not recommending you stake these ones that I've got going here, but I just wanted to, it's not refreshing and telling me the returns I'm getting for some reason. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So if you stake these two coins together, I'm actually getting at about 250% return per year. This one here is a bit more, it's up around 300% return per year. It's meant to print it in there, but it's not doing it. I don't know why. Try it on Firefox. No, it should always work here. Are these sort of returns sustainable, Les, in your no. opinion? No. <laughs> um, that's what I'm saying. These, these ones, they big high 100%ers that I was talking about. They're not sustainable long term. Um, that's why I sort of recommend, you know, if you're if you're going to hold Ethereum anyway, you might as well stake it, earn a return. Um, if you're holding Bitcoin, you might as well stake it, earn a return. And the returns you get off those sort of coins are sustainable. You know, things like, you know, even up to sort of 50 and 60 percent returns, they're, they're they're sustainable. And without getting too technical, the way the way those returns are generated. Also depends where you're staking it too, but um, if you're just going to stake something like Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, the returns are quite often generated just from the DeFi space. What's DeFi? It's decentralized, decentralized finance. So as opposed to the current banking system, which is centralized finance, decentralized finance is the crypto's answer to the current banking system. So instead of just having you know, the bank, 
holding the money and doing everything. We have, just like crypto, we have people all over the world that um, are, are funding loans that are actually earning, which you can earn interest off, et cetera. So instead of having just a central body like the bank, it's decentralized into lots of little individual things. Exactly the same way that crypto isn't like Bitcoin's not produced by the Bitcoin company. You know, it's, it's produced what they call mined from, you know, thousands of different locations around the world. So it's decentralized. Same sort of thing. What you can do with crypto, you can go in, you can use some crypto for collateral, take out a loan, um, just like from the bank, take out a loan, you've got to have collateral, and, and then you pay that back and you pay, you pay interest when you pay it back. But when you're involved in, in staking, you're on the other side of things. So you're actually staking your crypto, which is used as um, it, it's used as a, the, the capital for people that are taking out loans. And because they're borrowing your money, they're not really borrowing your money, but this is how the funds are generated. You actually earn returns on that as well. Some of the other- I think what we're finding, Les, is a little bit like all of these wallets now are quintessentially now becoming like the banks. And yeah. where you hold your coin, you know, banks want you to hold your money with them. That's why they offer you little savings accounts with, you know, the 0.015% per annum and all those exciting stuff. We're seeing the same thing kind of occur now with wallet providers. They want you to hold yeah, exactly. your crypto with them. That's, um, really, that's really decentralized finance. That's sort of another that's right. way Yeah. So I don't what, know if it's of interest, but I can give you a sneaky peek of my hyperpay wallet if you like, which is which is an example of what's starting to occur now. I'm still wrapping my head around the hyperpay wallet itself, but it's a great wallet. And I've done a few little bits and pieces in there. Um, and, yeah, I mean, just by holding my USDT there in my regular wallet, my regular USDT account, I'm, I'm getting... USDT accumulating at the rate of 2.5% per annum, effectively, yeah, which, like all right, it. not huge, but it's more than I get having it sitting on my trader. Exactly. And getting um, getting back to whether these returns are sustainable, um, we, we all sort of, God knows why, but we all understand and trust the current um, banking um What's the word? We all understand and trust the banks. I don't know why. I don't really. The current, the current financial Thank system. You. Yeah, I don't know why this, either. This what was that coin we were talking about earlier? Yeah, exactly. 74 but, um, trillion market cap. <laughs> what I was going to say, I remember when I first opened up a bank account, you know, a while ago, just quietly, quite a while ago, um, I was actually getting 12% per annum interest on my bank account. And that's sort of, obviously unheard of now you talk to anyone that's younger than me and they they sort of don't even really believe that um so back then banks were paying you know that sort of return these days and this is why i don't really like the banking system because i'm involved Can in I, a lot of, I'm involved what were the in lending rates trading. back then though pardon yeah, well, yeah the, the lending, lending the lending rate would have been higher than it is now but that's that's okay i don't want to talk about that side of things at the moment but so one of the reasons I, I, I'm a bit nasty on the banks is that because of my involvement with Forex trading, I know what sort of returns I can get from Forex trading. And you've got to believe that, you know, that sets me with some knowledge and some really good technology to, to help me do it. But still, whatever I can make, you've got to believe that the banks have got better experts and better technology to help them trade the forex markets and that's what they do with our money they borrow our money give us nothing for it these days and they put it into trading on the forex markets and earn huge returns and you know so you know you might you might get one percent um annual return from your bank but then they take fees out of it they take your money they trade it they make these huge returns um yeah, you know, so that's why I'm dirty on them because doing my own forex trading, I'm just cutting out that middleman, which is the bank. But anyway, getting getting back to the the decentralized finance space and crypto, that's 
you know, that's essentially the same sort of thing. If you think about staking in, in various different wallets on different exchanges, et cetera, like Amanda said, that's just exactly like the banking system, except that it's through various different wallets and apps and, you know, it's decentralized and it's crypto. You've got, you know, you can stake on most exchanges these days, like Binance, um, Coinbase, all of that. You, there's, there's desktop wallets, you know, like Exodus, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't know anything about crypto, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but that's fine. So you can stake on them as well. You can even do various staking through hardware wallets and everything as well. So there's, was there's hardly... Say, in, sorry? In, saying that, in saying that too, I think it's always, it's always very good to go and check out, you know, if there's a particular coin. Like I'm rather partial to theatre. I think DOT, the polka dot system that they're um, creating is a very long-term viable ecosystem. So often with these coins themselves, the individual projects themselves, they will provide you an opportunity to stake your coins with them as part of the project because it, it, it adds stability and a foundation to the company and the project that they're actually building as well. So it's always worth looking specifically at the project providers themselves of what they're offering as well. It might just be a little app wallet or somewhere on, you know, I know with theatre you can download a little app and mine it on your computer and little things like that. So there's all these little interesting things cropping up now that are definitely worth looking into, you know. Unbelievable different amount of ways that you can earn in the crypto space. But yeah, like, like you are saying, when the, the company, like I like Polkadot as well, like you say, you've got a company, like the company that's produced Polkadot, they obviously what they want to do is they want that the dot token to increase in value. Obviously, that's just like having a company, you want the shares to be worth more money. So if people are always selling their shares, that makes it a seller, you know, so the, the, that's going to push the price down. Um, so if you stake the coins, then you're not selling them. So that helps, as Amanda said, keep stability in it and stop the price from dropping. And hopefully if enough people do that, it'll push the price up as well. So the company can afford to pay some pretty good staking returns because that's helping them push up the price of their, their product, their shares, their coin, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, we have definitely got off the everyday investing type saving spiel here, but that was to be expected. Um, but that that's really what I would be, you know, if I was brand new, that's what I'd be looking at, finding some way of starting to save some money, um, something simple to start investing it, to just start building up a little bit of a... Um, an account there and then I could diversify into things that you know perhaps like crypto or you know the hyper fund app or you know trading if that was something that really interested you um you, you can start sort of you're diversifying into into other areas as well but it all starts with making a start I really do like, about to say that every every at the end of the day whatever you do just start you just got to start. You don't, you don't want to wait for the best time to start because the best time's now. Simple as that. Um, no, actually, the best time to start was 10 years ago. The second best time's now. But, um, you know, like everything you know, I, I do, you know, like it's well, not I do, but probably everybody does. You know, if you're, if you're overweight, you know, you know exactly what you've got to do to lose weight. You've got to start eating less. You've got to start exercising more. You know, you've got to get out there. Um, but you, you don't because you just don't get around to starting. It's not because you don't know what to do. You just don't get around to starting. You know, you, 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 know, you don't have to be overweight. You can just be completely unfit. And, you know, it, it's simple. You've got to go and join a gym or you've got to start walking every morning or you've got to get up off the lounge and don't worry about watching the soapies and just get active and eat healthy. We all know what we need to do to, to lose weight and get fit. But we just definitely don't necessarily do it. It's exactly the same with finances except that we may not necessarily know what to do to get started. But the thing is with this day and age we live in, you know, it's the information age. There's nothing that's worth learning that you can't find just from your phone. We all know Google, YouTube, all of those lovely things. There's a lot of crap on there, of course, as well. But if you, you know, if you really want to start something, you can definitely 
find somewhere or someone that can point you in the right direction of information you need. So just make a start, make that decision and do it, whatever it may be. Any parting comments, guys? Otherwise, I'm going to stop this recording because I don't like to make big, long videos, even though I always seem to. <clears throat> Actually, what I did, I know when we started at the beginning talking about like the raise up and like a, a lot of like it, it's not something that is really has any sort of referral commission structure or anything, except in that if you can you can get off this call, you can go and you can just go to your Play Store, um, download the Raise app, and, and just get started. Simple as that. But if you if you get somebody's referral code, then you'll get a five dollar bonus when you start. Five dollars. I know it's not much, but um, you know. So if I was to give you my referral, hey, code, I'd make five, five, bucks, five bucks. bucks. I'd make five bucks. And if you're if you're talk, if you've got a lot of friends, that could work out good. But if you're um, if you're making a start and you're just you know going to be pulling five bucks a week aside to put into your into your investment account, then you know, an extra five bucks from your your mate jumping on board and doing the same thing can definitely add up. So, and you'll get five bucks as well. So, yeah, it's always if it's even. You, you can buy you can buy a beer. Yeah, every, every everything sure. pretty much like that these days. Even when you go and open up a cryptocurrency exchange account. You can go and do that on your own, but if you get a referral link from your friend, you'll save a few. You know, you you might save ten to fifty percent on your fees that they charge. Or you can just go and join up on your own without a referral code and pay the full amount of fees. It's the same with the Raise app, you know. So, all those sort of things, you might as well find a friend that's already involved and you know help each other out. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop recording.